What's going on guys? Today's video, what you've been asking for, I'm going to be doing an EA Sports NHL cover tier list. This video was kind of inspired by, of course, the new NHL 23 cover. I put a poll up on my Instagram, and the majority of you actually don't like the new cover, so I figured I'm just going to give you guys my thoughts on every single cover EA has released for the NHL series. Also, if you guys aren't you know, following me on social media, make sure you do that. Like this video if you enjoy them. So, we'll get started here, guys, starting off with the first one, NHL Hockey. I actually want to show you guys kind of a bigger picture here using the Wikipedia. So... Uh, you can see there, it looks like the Devils scoring on the Kings. I'm not really sure which player those are. Actually, it's Glenn Healy um, for the Kings in net there. You got the blue, the black. It's really not the best cover. It's an old cover, so I don't want to be too harsh on it. It's not the worst. Uh, when I say it's bad, it's tough to call the first NHL game ever's cover bad, but um, honestly, I feel like it's a little too dark, so I'm going to put it in the bad category. Um, next up here, guys, we have NHL 93. Again, I want to show you a bigger version of this. So, uh, pretty similar style. You got some players there out front of the goalie. Um, this one I kind of like a little bit better though, it's brighter, you got some player faces actually on each side, I like the kind of Sega logo there, so this one's okay, I feel like it's a bit of an upgrade there from the original cover. Now next year guys, we have NHL 94, a lot of people consider this to be the best NHL game ever made, I don't agree, I think you know there are better games, but it's a classic for sure. Speaking of classics, you got the classic logo there. Um, so this one had Thomas Sandstrom coming in on Andy Moog. And you got a couple Bruins defenders chasing them down there. You can see the majority of this cover, though, is white with just, like, the logo. And then you got some of, like, the NHL logos there with the picture above. I feel like this one isn't the greatest either. I definitely like, you know, the 93 one better. I feel like there's more work put into it. So not the worst. I, I would say it's bad. Like, there's definitely been better covers. So um, after that, guys, you have NHL 95 there. For some reason, Wikipedia wasn't loading the cover. But here you guys can see it blown up. I don't really like this one. I literally think... I could have made this. I mean, at the time, I think I was one years old, but literally just a white background, NHL 95, couple logos, like simple text. I can't believe that's even there by High Score Productions. EA Sports logo, just a square shot. I will say it's a cool, you know, picture they got, obviously. Pucks coming to the net, goalies to the side, players sliding to the net. Um, I think that's Madison Square Garden, it looks like. You can see, like, the top of the arena there, but I don't know. It's just so, so simple. I think I literally could have made this as soon as I started using Photoshop when I was, like, in high school. So... I would say this is probably one of the worst covers NHL's had, so it's going to go down there. Um, after that, guys, you have NHL 96. Now, this one I'm probably a little bit biased because the first time I had a revving on the cover, Iserman there chasing down Scott Stevens. Um, I like the fact that, you know, the Iserman is kind of coming out of the logo there in the middle. Um, again, I'm a little bit biased because Iserman's on it, so I'm going to say this one's okay. It's still not, like, amazing or anything, but it's an okay cover. Uh, after that, guys, you have NHL 97. This is when they actually started to kind of mix it up a bit. Um, I like, you know, they got a goalie on the cover, John Van Diesbrook, NHL 97 logo there. Isn't, you know, quite as good as the new NHL logos, but I'm a goalie. I like the fact the goalie's on the cover. This is the first cover that actually cut out the player from the camera shot. So I think, you know, this was obviously a big leap forward because of that reason. Because I was a goalie, I like goalies. I'm going to say it's a good cover. Like I said, I feel like it definitely made some big strides. Then NHL 98, I feel like they kind of went backwards. I feel like this one here with Peter Forsberg um, isn't the greatest. I think, you know, he's like partly cut off on the left. I feel like the cover, the player should be in the middle. It should be the main focus. He's off to the side. Then they got the logo on the top right. It's not the worst cover ever, but I definitely would have it there in the bad category. Now, after him, you got NHL 99 there with Eric Lindros. This one's, you know, pretty cool. I like the kind of like the blue with the logo coming out. The Lindros there, action shot. I would say it's an okay cover. Definitely not bad, but again, uh, not really kind of breaking the boundaries like the 97 cover did. Now, after that, guys, we have the first NHL 2000 cover there. Chris Pronger, uh, you actually got kind of like the fans blurred behind him, EA Sports, NHL 2000. I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm sure it's such a minor detail, but like the fact that they actually like have some fans behind them opposed to just the white background, I say it gives a bit of a plus, so I'm gonna put that one in the good category. And after that NHL 2001, you had Owen Nolan, I'm not gonna lie, even as a kid, I always thought this cover was just kind of awkward. I think it's the pose he's making, um, with like the circle behind him, like you can kind of tell it's not natural. I don't know what it was, but even as a kid, I thought this one just looked weird. Now, it's not the worst or anything, but I'm definitely going to have to put it in the bad category. Now, after that, NHL 2002, Mario Lemieux. Uh, I think it's the first NHL game I ever played at my cousin's house. You got a goat on the cover. Um, I definitely don't think it's a great cover, but again, with the goat, it's my first NHL game ever. So I'm going to put it at least in okay. Uh, I can't say that one is bad. Now, next one here, guys, NHL 2003. Jerome McGinley on that cover. This is the first NHL game I ever owned. <laughs> Again, I'm being biased. I looked at that one a ton as a kid. I thought it was pretty sick. I'm going to say it's a good one. A lot of these are going to be very, very similar. So you're really just going to kind of basically have to use your own personal biases to actually kind of separate them between like okay and good. 
Um, after that, then NHL 2004. I remember playing this game so much back in the GameCube. Of course, Danny Heatley was originally the cover boy, and then became Joe Sackick. And speaking of GameCube, guys, right here you can see the NHL 2004 cover with Sackick on the front. My copy had Danny Heatley on the front. I feel like it's a very similar cover either way. I think it's just a pretty average cover, so I'm just going to put it in the okay category. Um, next up there, you had NHL 2005, Marcus Nasland. Uh, I actually thought this was a pretty nice cover. I really like, like the kind of digital blocks there on the left side. I will say I'm not a huge fan of the white on white there with the jersey, but uh, overall, do I think this one is worth putting in the good category? It's tough. I think I'm going to say good. I think this one was like a pretty sharp one. I think it'll honestly look better in person uh, than it's showing right there. Now after that, guys, you had NHL 2006, Vinny LeCavier. I remember this game, liking it a ton because you could finally do all the trick deeks, like between the leg shots. I think you could even like flip it up and then smack it in. I don't think they've actually added that back to the game, like where you could do it yourself. The Zegers kind of takes two people to do, obviously. Um, looks like they had like some stuff going on in the background behind LeCavier, but this one you can kind of clearly tell is like cut out or whatever. I would say that one was just an okay cover. Definitely not bad. I feel like they definitely kind of perfected your, you know, sports cover between like NHL 2004, NHL 2009. Like they knew what would look decent, but never wanted to really try something new. Now NHL 07 here, guys, is of course after Ovechkin's rookie season. I thought this was one of the sickest covers, honestly. Like Marcus allison has got the white jersey there, but it's the vintage Washington Capitals Eagle jersey, which I think is a sick jersey. They've actually added some gray in the background to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, behind the logo, you can see they've made it dark, so it kind of stands out a bit. I thought this was such a sick cover as a kid. Um, is it one of the best covers ever? I don't know about that. It's definitely a great cover, though, in my mind. Can I put it into best NHL 07? Oh, that's tough. I'm going to put it great now, and then maybe I'll push it to best. It's, it's definitely, like, in between there. Um, next up, guys, we have NHL 2008. Eric Stahl on the cover of that one. This one I was never a big fan of, I think partly because I never owned this game, but, like, also you look at it, there's literally nothing going on in the background. I think it's just straight up white background. I honestly wonder if the artist forgot to add something before they shipped it out. Like, super, super boring. No, it's not terrible, though, but I would have it in the bad category. Um, after that, guys, we have NHL 2009. Dion Phaneuf on the cover of that one. I thought that was a pretty decent cover. Uh, nothing groundbreaking, nothing crazy. I wouldn't call it bad, though, so I'll have it in okay. Now, next up here, guys, NHL 10. Patty Kane on the cover of this one. As a kid, this was one of my favorite covers ever. I don't know why, but I thought like his mouth guard hanging out was so sick for some reason. Again, this is like my... What would it have been? My 15-year-old brain, I think, you know, thinking that. I thought, like, the ice, you know, on the cover with, like, the snowflakes moving around. I thought that was sick. And just to give you guys a better idea, right here's a bigger picture of the NHL 10 cover. You can see all the ice marks, the snow coming up. You can see, like, the arena behind them. I thought that one was so cool. It actually reminded me, too, guys, for this video, I wanted to actually show you guys what the covers looked like in real life. So, right here is the NHL 10 cover. I was supposed to be doing this for every cover. Totally forgot, so... Whether you guys can see an NHL 10 cover again, how nasty is that? I was going to do it starting with NHL 2003. So quickly here, right there's the 03 cover again. My first NHL game, goaded cover. Um, NHL 2004, you guys can see Danny Heatley on the front of it. Again, a lot of these are very similar looking. NHL 2005 there with Marcus Naslin again. I thought that one was a little bit nicer. Um, NHL 06, Vinny LeCavier. You got NHL 07, like I said, one of my favorites there with Ovechkin. After that, of course, you have NHL 08, Eric Stahl again, just plain background. And then before Patty Kane, you had NHL 09 there with Dion Phaneuf. So there you guys have a look at them in real life. Hopefully, you know, it kind of gives you a better idea. And now, like I was saying, guys, NHL 10 was one of my favorites as a kid. So easily, it's going to go in the best category. I really do think it's one of the best covers EA has made. And after that, guys, you have the NHL 11 cover. Again, Chicago Blackhawk on the front of it with Jonathan Taze. There you go. This one's pretty sick, too. I think it looks really good there. Uh, you actually have, like, a game shot behind him. You got, like, all the lines and everything. Uh, he's kind of like mid shot there. I personally think like the NHL 10, NHL 14 era was like the best for covers, as you guys are to see here with my rankings. So NHL 11, I don't think it was as good as NHL 10, but I do think it was a great cover. So I'll have it in that category. After that, guys, of course, NHL 12, Steven Stamkos on the front. That's another one that used like the lines or whatever. I thought it looked really sick. I can see him actually like celebrating there down on one knee. This one's got a bunch of stickers on it from like being pre-played and stuff. But another very, very cool cover. Um, was it one of the best ever? I don't think so. But again, I'll be putting it in the great category. Now this next one here, guys, NHL 13. Claude Giroux on the cover of that one. I thought this one was so sick. I like the fact it's like a black and white background, but he's in color. Uh, you got like the paint splashing up there from the bottom um, off of his jersey. It's hard to do backwards in the camera. Uh, the clouds and stuff behind him, like the ice rink below. You can kind of see uh, the boards there. Absolutely love this one as well. So just like NHL 10, 
putting that in the best category. I think it's well deserved. And now the last one, guys, from the 360 and PS3 era, we have NHL 14. Marmor drew on the front of that one. I thought this cover was so sick. Again, we get a goalie back on the cover, making a big glove save. Uh, you can see Verdure's face clearly. I do like kind of like that um, design they had behind the logo there at the red and black. Now, was it one of the best covers ever? For some reason, I always just thought it was slightly worse than 13 and 10, but I still really, really liked it. So, um, obviously, I'm going to have it in the great category. Clearly, you guys can see, too, um, NHL 10 to NHL 14 was, like, the goaded years for the covers. Two of them the best, the other three in great. Like, whoever was making those covers then, that they should have kept. I thought those were some of the nicest covers ever. Those were also some of the best games, in my opinion. Now, moving on, guys, NHL 15. I actually do think I have that cover... You guys can see here, not only do I have it, but it's signed by Patrice Bergeron. So this one's pretty nice, but I feel like, you know, they got kind of boring there. Like there's just some lights or whatever in the background, not as dynamic. Um, the shot isn't as close up. So it's a good cover, uh, but it's not a great cover. So clearly I'll be putting it in the good category. Now after that, NHL 16, unfortunately, I do not have a physical copy of anymore, but you guys can see it there. It was supposed to be Kane and Taze. Now that version actually looked a lot worse. That version would have been worst for sure. Um, this one though, I don't know, something about it I'm not a huge fan of. I think Taze looks too skinny with the logo in front of him. Like, the logo is just taking up so much of his body. Um, there's just so much extra space not being used. I don't think it's the worst cover ever, but I do think it's a bad cover. Um, NHL 17, after that one, Tarasenko on the front. I actually really like this cover. I think Tarasenko's doing a sick selly. Um, I like the fans behind him. It actually reminds me a lot of the Chris Pronger cover. Another St. Louis Blues, NHL 2000. You can see the St. Louis fans blurred out behind him. NHL 17 here. Kind of going for a similar vibe. So I like the kind of throwback, the energy there. I like the Selly. Um, it's definitely at least good for me. Is it a great cover? I don't think it's on the same level as those covers I'm looking at. So I'll have it in good. Um, after that, NHL 18 there, McDavid. I like McDavid a lot. I like the fact he likes down on one knee selling. I always thought this one was pretty sick. I'm going to probably put this one in good as well. Um, after that, guys, we have NHL 19. I'll quickly show you here. I feel like I'm just showing off all the games I own right now, but I have a signed copy there, NHL 19 by PK Subban. Um, this one I also thought was pretty cool. I will say, I think the orange background definitely clashes with the yellow jerseys. So because of that, I think I'm going to put it in the okay category. Again, I think that one would have looked a lot sharper with, say, I don't know, like a light blue background, something like that, which would have, you know, contrasted better with his jersey. But still not a bad cover. I have it in okay there. Um, NHL slap shot. So never owned this game. I was actually always looking forward to playing NHL on the Wii. And then I think I sold my Wii before NHL slap shot came out. Where is it here? Uh, there you have it. It's actually not even showing the cover. So here you guys look at the NHL slap shot cover. You can see very similar design to like the 10 to 14 covers. And that's because I accidentally did this one out of order. It came out uh, the same year NHL 11 came out. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Gretzky there lifting the cup. His mouth's quite wide. It looks a little off, but I do like, you know, the pick of him as a kid on the left, him on the Kings on the right. Again, like, I like this style a lot. I do think it's kind of one of the worst ones of that style, though, so I don't think it's quite in the great category for me. I'll say it's just a good cover. Now, after that, guys, we have the NHL 20 game. Uh, right here, you guys can see Matthews there in front of a pink background. This one I wasn't a huge fan of. I thought it was pretty boring. It's literally just a single shot of Matthews plopped on front of a pink background, threw the EA Sports NHL 20 logo in front of it. Again, it's a cover I felt like I could make. I'm not great with Photoshop. If I can make the cover, it's not good enough in my opinion. So is it bad enough to be worse though? Is it worse than the NHL 95 one? I feel like all these covers in bad, at least, you know, they tried something. NHL 08, I guess, not really, but even the logo there, they have, you know, a bit of something to it. <sighs> I'm going to put it worse because I think, you know, by this point, they should be knowing what the cool covers are. So I'm going to have the NHL 20 there in worse. Now, for some reason, there's a duplicate NHL 20. Uh, we'll just use this as the NHL 21 cover. You guys can see there Ovechkin back on it. Uh, I think the second guy to be on the cover twice after Taze. I thought this one was pretty cool. Um, I liked kind of all the different images there. I think Madden FIFA also went for a similar style. Uh, they got like, the black and white picks there, him lifting the cup. I thought this one was pretty cool. So um, was it great like the 07 cover? No, but I'll say NHL 21 was a good cover. And then after that, guys, of course, we have NHL 22 cover that came out last year. Um, definitely better than the last cover with Matthews. I thought him locking down the hall there was pretty cool. Um, was it a good cover? Again, it's pretty simple. Like it looks like a shot of him walking on the cover, the logos and stuff. Luckily, it's just a really cool shot. It looks sharp. So I'm gonna say that one was okay for the NHL 22 cover. And then finally here, guys, the NHL 23 cover, the one majority of you didn't like. I'll throw it up on screen right now for you guys. Obviously, this one is tough. 
Um, I think, you know, they were trying something new here, which I applaud. Also, too, if you guys are wondering why it's not like Zegris when he's crouched down, that's the X Factor Edition cover. For all of these, it's just like the base cover that we're reviewing. Um, I think the X Factor Edition for NHL 22 was actually way worse than the standard one. Um, for this one, it's pretty similar vibe. I got the shorts on, no helmet, no gloves. Uh, actually, this one, yeah, no gloves. I think the X Factor Edition, they actually are wearing gloves. Just saying there, sticks, jersey. Um, it's tough. The palm trees, I don't really know how that fits the NHL vibe. I wouldn't say it's the worst cover ever because, like I said, they're trying something new. I'm a big Money Ducks fan. They got that. They got two people. I wouldn't say it's the worst cover ever, but I do think it's a bad cover. So I would add it there next NHL 18. And overall, guys, I'm looking at these covers, and I think I'm pretty happy with where I put everything. Uh, majority of the covers are good or okay, which I think, you know, makes sense when grading. You got a couple best, a couple worst. Overall, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Love to hear from you guys in the comments section. What's your favorite NHL cover of all time? What's your least favorite NHL cover of all time? Uh, we could look to and see what some like community said about this. Okay, so this is pretty cool, guys. Below is actually the average rankings from eight submitted tier lists. They got NHL 14 at the top, so it uh, looks like they had a lot more categories here. Of course, I had it number two. 090713, excellent. I think NHL 10 is way too low there. 94, I think that's probably just because they know 94 is a classic. 08 too high in my opinion, um, bad 2003-2005, um, they got trash on NHL 18, really, NHL 18, absolute trash, NHL 97, I don't think belongs there, uh, worst NHL 20, so kind of the same as me, so obviously yeah, some different rankings there, like I said, like here from you guys in the comment section below, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave that thumbs up, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to sub button as well, thank you guys so much for watching, have a nice day, goodbye.